Well, the news became official. Coquis Washington's the new head coach of Rutgers women's basketball, replacing the all-time legend C. Vivian Stringer. What is that like, and how did this all come together, and what steps need to be taken immediately? Let's find out. Talk to our Elise Meneker. Coach, first, congratulations on your new head coaching job, and welcome back to the Big Ten. Good to see you. Thank you, Elise. It's happy. It's, it's great to be back, and I'm happy to be back in the Big Ten. I want to go back to your introductory press conference and the emotions that you felt. And you were saying not typically an emotional person, but obviously that was a very big day for you. Just describe for me what you were feeling. I felt so much energy from the Rutgers fan base and the Rutgers family, all the people that were there. It was so much positive energy coming my way and, and excitement about moving the program uh, forward at this coming year and, and things like that. And then to see that uh, some of the Notre Dame players surprised me and they came walking down the stands and uh, it was just kind of overwhelming to see that level of support um, from them and them to surprise me and come. And uh, so it just kind of opened up a, a floodgate of emotions both ways that I was not really <laughs> expecting to have happen. All positive, though, and, and those moments really don't happen often when we talk about the Rutgers women's basketball program. Of course, as you take over for C. Vivian Stringer, and I know that you mentioned she is a woman who inspired you, that over the times where you kind of had games that overlapped with her coaching against her, that she really just kind of gave you words of encouragement. What were some of the things that she shared with you? Well, one thing in particular that, that she remarked um, to me time and time again was, how impactful our position is and how much we have to pour into these young ladies. And don't forget that in the midst of competition, don't forget that in the midst of chasing championships and chasing greatness that we're charged to really pour into the kids and to, to give them all the love that we have to offer. Um, and I remember that, I remember that. And, and she did that for me in terms of, you know, we'd compete and we'd, go at it on the on the court. And then after the game, she's coming up and putting an arm around my shoulders and asking me, are you okay? How you doing? You know, make sure you make sure you spend time with your family. Don't forget about your family. And just being um, giving words of wisdom about how to thrive and survive in this profession that can be so cutthroat at times. And you mentioned just what she meant to you. And I know even just covering her, you know, what she meant to me and what she has meant for this sport, what she has meant for women, a true trailblazer in every sense of the word. Just what does it mean to you to take over for such a legendary coach? It's such an honor. I mean, it's such an honor to follow behind her and to have the benefit of all that she did and all that she gave certainly to the Rutgers family, the Rutgers program, the Rutgers community, um, but to the larger community, there's been so much outpouring of support uh, because of who C. Vivian Stringer was to so many people and who she continues to be for so many people. You know, she's the standard. She's the standard bearer of what it looks like uh, to be excellent in our profession and the hardships that she had to deal with as being one of the only black female head coaches in the country when she first started out with her and, and Marion Washington at Kansas, there weren't a ton of people that looked like me that were running programs. And so that uh, fighting through that and being alone and being lonely sometimes in this profession, um, it just means a lot to see what she overcame and the and the ceilings, the glass ceilings that she shattered through so that I could be sitting here having this conversation conversation with you. Yeah, and even I can think for so many things that she did and seeing no limits to what women and really anyone can do. She was a woman who was around basketball for 50 years and you're a coach who's been around the game coaching for 22 years. 12 years at Penn State specifically. How have you already seen the league just change from when you were coaching then to now? Well, it certainly has so many good coaches in the league and it's very competitive. And when you look across the conference and you look at, you know, players like Nas Hillman, who just transitioned to uh, the WNBA, but so many good players, you know, I'm getting headaches already trying to figure out how I'm going to stop Caitlin Clark, you know, <laughs> just so many good players in the conference, so much good coaching. And, and it's really a variety of styles 
in our conference that makes it such a challenge. You don't have the same style every single night. Um, and that, I think, is what one of the things that makes coaching in the Big Ten such a challenge. So then what did you learn in your time at Penn State that now you want to take moving forward and even, even in your other positions that you have had since then? Well, I think uh, in terms of the time that I was at Penn State, I think there's a familiarity with being in the conference. I know what it. I know what the Wisconsin arena is like. It's going to be cold because it's going to be ice under the floor, right? You know, I know that it's going to be a big crowd at Iowa. I know what it's going to be like to be in these different arenas, and I think that will that familiarity will help the adjustment and the transition for our staff because I'm, I'm familiar with it. Um, being away from the game, I feel like I got to like get my PA. PhD in coaching, right? I, I got to go work with a Hall of Fame coach and Sherry Cole and be in the gym with her every day and watch how she taught, watch what she emphasized, watch how she connected um, with her players and how she managed her staff to, to achieve the levels of success that she had. And that was an amazing experience. Then to transition to be with Neil Ivey, who, in my opinion, is a future Hall of Fame head coach because she's an amazing, amazing offensive talent. Um, she she brought what she learned in the NBA back to Notre Dame. And so being able to be in the room with her and, and on the court with her as we implemented some of those ideas and some of those strategies um, really helped elevate my my knowledge of the game and, and gave me some new ideas about how to coach and strategize for success. So um, being around just excellent coaches uh, have, has been the biggest benefit I got from uh, the past three years of being an assistant coach again. A law degree, and now we'll add a PhD in coaching to that <laughs> list. Uh, but that means you're ready to take on the challenge because we're almost in June already. How does this transition have to work for you? As I imagine, it would have to go pretty quickly. Yeah, it has to go pretty pretty quickly. But one of the things that um, one of the, the, the best coaches ever, John Wooden, would always say is be quick, but don't hurry. And so I'm kind of taking that mentality in terms of building out our staff and building out our roster. Um, we want to we want to get it done, but we're not going to rush and make make mistakes or we're going to rush and fill spots without the right people. So we're going to take our time and make sure we get people, coaches and and players that are a great fit for the Rutgers family, that are a great fit for the Rutgers community and are going to be a great fit for our program and help us move forward in a positive way, um, in a strong way uh, as we head into the season. And finally, I would think that, you know, the feeling around the university is when you look at not just yourself being hired, but the other sports, you could look at baseball, basketball, women's soccer, lacrosse, really go down the line. Just how does it feel to be a part of a university where I would think right now there's a lot of optimism in that athletic department? You're so right, Elise. There's so much optimism. The the fan base that has been reaching out to me, and in particular the other women's um, women's basketball alums that I've reached out, they're like so psyched about Rutgers athletics right now because of all the the success that some of those other programs are having, and and they're excited about the women's basketball program joining in that success and and continuing to elevate the profile of Rutgers athletics across the country. Well, Coach, we are excited to talk to you today and to have you and see. You you at Rutgers as well. Congratulations again. Great to see you. Thank you so much. Now over to men's lacrosse. Yeah, that's it. Just one more to go. Maryland is in the national championship game Monday, Memorial Day, in the afternoon against Cornell. Win that, and you're national champs for the second time in five years. Go back to baseball. Maryland had the best regular season in the Big Ten, but they were out fairly quickly in the Big Ten tourney. What do we expect from them in the NCAA tournament? That's next.